Sin angle. Oh, oh, look at that chin. Oh. The Great War. A big fucking war that killed lots of people. Now these men here fought to protect men like this. Now I'm not a scientist, but uh, that's an explosion. And uh, it, I think it's common knowledge that uh, they, they hurt. So, you're sprinting through the battlefield, scared out of your mind, and suddenly, a bomb goes off next to you. Now, if you somehow didn't die, what would happen? Well, you'd probably get a couple bits chopped off, um, and then you'd just live out your life as a uh, amputee. You'd attend rehabilitation classes, meet other amputees, and get used to your new way of life. If you're a lucky man, you could find yourself some prosthetic limbs, which can help you regain that lost mobility. Now this is all if you're very lucky and survive a bombing. What's most likely to happen is a man in a plane drops a bomb and gets a 45 kill streak, you included. Now what if you're at the front lines with your fellow comrades defending your country with your trusty firearm, but suddenly you get shot down. Mr. Gene Cloud here, if he was found before he was dead by a medic, he'd be carried off the field to a location where he could be treated on. This role was done by the stretcher boys. They were the guys that carried the stretchers and ran in and carted dudes that got shot out. You might have heard of John Simpson before. He was that guy that you got taught about in primary school that carted all the sick dudes out with his donkey. It was pretty fucking cool. If you were to get shot somewhere like your head, for example, your face, it's a different story. Come Harold Gillies, a New Zealander born doctor who had a passion for facial reconstruction surgery ever since he saw it performed via other doctors. He'd often perform on patients that are like soldiers with facial deformations, typically bullet wounds. Soldiers often came back from war with facial injuries so bad they looked like, quote, monsters. So Harold Gillies helped that. He rebuilt people's faces giving them some hope to rejoin society again. In World War I, he performed over 11,000 surgeries on over 5,000 men. He helped so many people that in June of 1930, he was knighted, becoming Sir Harold Gillies. Later on, in 1946, he was one of the first ever doctors to conduct a gender reassignment surgery, changing Laura Dillian to Michael Dillian, making him the first transsexual man in history. Now, one of the most common illnesses people got in World War I was trench foot, because you'd be in the trenches and your feet would go manky. Soldiers were forced to take off their shoes and air out their feet to ensure trench foot didn't set in, and if they had already gotten trench foot, well, treatments had been made, such as a foot wash made of lead and opium, and if their feet were getting better, they'd wax some oil on there and give them a little massage. Fellas, I'll cover you. Come, trust me. I'll cover you. Do you like sushi? Run for your life. I'll cover you. Get up. Who are you walking for? Talk to me. Look at me in the eyes. Look at me in the eyes. Whoa. Okay, go. No!